Hey guys, how are you? Welcome to a new Kerbal Space Program video, after some time without creating KSP content, I have decided to return with a series of videos in a somewhat different, simpler format, and without much production, this way I will be able to bring videos more often to the channel, and thus have a little more activity for the YouTube algorithm. In this series I will be playing career mode, with Kerbalism and JNSQ as the most important mods of the entire configuration, most of the stock technology, and some structural elements and fuel tanks from external mods. For a while I was stuck in this mod configuration, because after doing some research and progressing in the science tree, I discovered through topographical analysis that there is not a single reservoir of water dense enough on the entire surface of Mun, nor in that of Minmus, so it would be useless to build a base or gateway station to other planets. It seems that the closest water reserve is at the poles of Duna, and I'm not even sure if this is viable yet. If you add to this that most contracts in JNSQ plus Kerbalism provide a very small amount of funds in contrast to what it costs you to carry out the missions, to the point of resulting in more loss than gain for some cases, it becomes I totally impractical the idea of creating planetary bases, motherships, and basically everything that makes KSP fun. Luckily, I found a somewhat ingenious alternative to progressing my career at JNSQ, without exploiting two surreal bugs, and through a perfectly plausible business model in the real world. Resource Mining for those who do not know the planetary base mod, it includes a nuclear fission energy system, as well as the possibility of extracting uranium from the environment using excavation drills. Although the production of enriched uranium appears somewhat simplified and automated, it is not exactly cheap or rushed, but rather it takes a lot of time and energy to fill a container by extracting resources. But, at least it is possible to produce it from local ore. This undoubtedly opened a window of possibilities for me to continue this series in an interesting way, and make some crazy creations, which I will tell you about later. The key point of this is that enriched uranium costs a fortune, approximately 1 million funds per full container. So if we extract enough uranium from the local ore, this will give us the possibility of recovering the loaded containers, and earning approximately 3 million for each full uranium charge. I had to raise a lot of funds to start this because in general all tools related to nuclear materials cost incredibly expensive in KSP, even empty containers are expensive. The launch of my first base cost me a total of 5 million, discounting the two that I recovered from this cargo nuclear helicopter. In this first chapter, I will show you the installation of my first nuclear material refinery, if this is successful, I will be able to make incredibly monstrous ships once again, but this time, in career mode. I could even pick up my abandoned generational arcs projects that I built in version 1.7 of KSP. The first thing we will do is place these stations away from the base. In this way we prevent them from being rendered during the launch of other larger ships, and causing a sudden drop in FPS when it has a considerable number of refineries. Once they are operational, it would be necessary, or at least advisable, to bring the uranium shipments to the base by land or air thus obtaining the greatest amount of funds possible from these containers, which ranges from 900 funds of clean profit for each tank. It should be noted that each payload built incorporates four containers of uranium, which will give us, as I mentioned, about 3.5 million per trip. In this way, we obtain a private and self-financed space program that does not need external contracts for its sustenance. Officially, now we are also dedicated to local and space mining of resources. Meanwhile, I will tell you a little about the design of this aircraft and my configuration of mods, at least in the most important ones. When I created this instance to essentially play career mode, I did so with realism as the main foundation, so Kerbalism had to be mandatory. You may be wondering, what about real fuels, Principia, remote tech and real solar system? The truth is that I had my reasons for discarding these mods due to compatibility problems with Kerbalism. Real Fuels only works with Kerbalism if you have RSS installed. RSS, although I love his initiative, I have it reserved for a special project I am currently writing, plus I like to play in the Kerbal system, as if the Kerbals were a real race instead of a cartoonish pseudo-humanity, I will explain later better my reasons on this. Finally, the Remote Tech mod, I uninstalled it for a couple of reasons, the first is that it does not give me the possibility of combining antennas, the truth is I felt that it took away many creative possibilities from the game, and finally, the last time I played with this mod apparently it started demanding too much of my CPU, which started causing insane lag in my missions as I accumulated more and more ships in orbit, then I couldn't uninstall it because all my systems depended on it, and I ended up lose that game, for this reason I decided not to use it again in the short term about this aircraft. 
It is a nuclear helicopter for super heavy loads, it has 12 main rotors for lift and 6 secondary rotors that control the yaw. The rotors belong to the fire spitter mod, which I use to reduce the parts content, by eliminating the need for use blades on propeller aircraft, in addition it looks a little better when they rotate. The engines are powered by 3 fission reactors on board the helicopter, as they are the only form of energy that can satisfy its tremendous consumption. And of course I opted for an electric configuration since these have better power and respond more quickly to power changes, which allows us to use throttle controller avionic to stabilize the flight automatically, and make the trip easier. It is also necessary to be somewhat careful with the combination of the SAS and the TCA at the same time, because although in small ships this does not represent any danger, when it comes to large ships or with fragile cargoes, there is a risk of entering into a spiral of compensations that cause unstable vibrations and end up breaking the joints. For this reason, automated systems should not be abused in this case. Once we are at a safe distance from the space center, we begin to descend slowly, using the SAS as little as possible, and trying not to turn off the engines at any time. This is because Kerbalism incorporates one of the real fuel's functions, which which are the limited ignitions in almost all engines, although I established the reliability of the engines at high. We have 31 ignition sequences and each one increases the risk of damaging an engine, for this reason we always try to minimize them. Since these are electric engines with short propellers, the response is practically the same as that of a rocket engines. I am still concerned about the durability of these rotors, since I do not accept the idea that an electric engines can break down just after 31 ignitions. I don't want to compare something of the scale to the fans in my house but... You understand what I'm trying to say, right? Maybe it could be a compatibility problem with Kerbalism, I don't know. Whatever the case, it is not a big impediment fortunately. At least not at these stages of the game, so I will continue with the mining operation pretending that nothing happens. At the point of approaching land, I was missing some dust raised by the propellers, it is a shame that they have not implemented that mechanics in these engines, it would create a slightly more realistic effect. Anyway, we have already touched down, now all that remains is to separate the platform and move the helicopter away. And, touch down. Now we will switch to the refinery, and manually activate all its systems. I didn't even take the time to configure all the sequences because Kerbalism has a shortcut in its interface that allows me to deploy solar panels and mining systems from a list, which speeds it up considerably and saves me the need to use redundant and simple commands. At least one thing was preserved in JNSQ, and that is that you can extract ore from almost anywhere, including the vicinity of the Kerbal Space Center, so once the drills are deployed, we will extract enough ore to keep running. Just one. Of the six centrifuges that I placed on the base. What a thing. As a note, this is something you can do in the stock game by the way, but with liquid fuel, which is also quite expensive, but of course, with uranium it is more profitable and you can use smaller tanks. Now the station is operating, and produces little more than one unit of enriched uranium per day, it may take a couple of years to fill the 8,000 units of enriched uranium that fit in these tanks, but about 2 million funds a year, it's an excellent profit, at least until I raise the funds necessary to upgrade this refinery. For now we will return to the base with the helicopter to recover the 2 million that this vehicle costs, and we will let some time pass to see if our work finally bears fruit.
Although the entire refinery is automated, perhaps it would not be a bad idea to incorporate an engineer to work to speed up the production of resources, I don't know if it is due to the low concentration or perhaps the fact that it is not operated by any engineer, but if it is possible to speed up the work, perhaps it would be worth adding some food reserves to this position so that it can be operated by other Kerbals. For now, I will begin a maneuver towards Edna to fulfill one of my pending contracts, which are not few, and with some luck, they will also be the last, at least until I have at my disposal a mothership, built thanks to, to the finances obtained by these refineries. I am even considering building a road from the space center to this new facility to move the mineral easily by ground vehicles. Of course, as long as all this works. For the moment we will leave this video here. Remember to like and subscribe to see the next chapter. See you soon.